render. Okay. So let us go ahead and uh, do some fixes. Let's go to the eyeballs. So first things first is these things are still curves, which means uh, unless we want to animate them as curves, which is probably a cool idea too, um, we would have to do some special ring stuff. I don't really want to deal with that right now. But I would say in the future we should totally learn that kind of thing. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert these to a mesh. So Alt-C and then Mesh from Curve. So now, if we hit tab, we no longer are in a curve. Let's just make sure that these things are all good. Okay, fantastic. So let us move these to layer one. Let's see what we need and what we don't. We don't need these. Delete. Do we need this? No, we don't need that eye cuppy. Do we need this? This is the remnant of our curves. We don't need that anymore. Uh, we need our light setup, which is here. We need our... Uh, we don't need those eyes. <laughs> uh, we need our visor. We need our helmet. And we need this bit. So let's kind of look at all this stuff and mash them together into our mesh here. Okay. So for simplicity's sake, I am not going to touch this fancy awesome sun shield. Even though we built it. Let's take all these. And let's duplicate them, and let's move them to this layer over here. Over here. Okay, this is where we are going to join them all. Oh, geez. We're going to first go and uh, apply all their modifiers. So, apply, apply. Oh, boy, this is going to take forever. So, apply, 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 apply. And always apply top to bottom, or else we'll get crazy problems. Apply, apply. Okay. Uh, eyeball's good. This needs to be fixed. That's good. There. Uh, let's check down here. Apply, apply. Okay. So, are we almost ready? Yes, I think we're just about ready to go. So, cursor to center. Select all, and then, all right, uh, control J, so that is join, we need to fix the crotch plate before we go, and apply, apply, knee pads, apply, apply, okay, and let's just make sure, control J, and now, let's see if everything made it, so turn on this, Turn on rendered. Are we still here? Is everything still here? Oh, yes, our beautiful blender blue eyes. They're still here. Excellent. Um, okay. Looks like nothing was mangled in that conversion. Let's check on our booty bottoms. The grippies are still there. Excellent. Okay. So, in this case, now let's uh let's try to make a rig in the next six minutes. Are you guys excited? I'm really excited. Okay, so this is gonna be a really quick dealy bopper on rigs. And first comes first, how we make one is I'm gonna shut off this over here, turn off the render. Solid. I'm gonna drag this all the way over because I don't wanna have to reopen that every time. And let us do that. Shift S, control, cursor to center, add, and then we're going to add a armature. Single bone. Okay, and we're going to look to the side, see where our root is. Hit Z to enter wireframe mode, and we're going to make a super, super simple rig. We're not going to worry too much about how this is going to play out. Hit tab to enter edit mode. Going to drag this up, drag this up, drag this up after extruding. So yes, you can extrude bones, and it's fantastic. So this is going to be its spine, and then... There are properties, and where are you, properties? You've moved a little bit. X-axis mirror. So now there is a special command to uh, mirror bone extrude, which I believe is Shift-E. Yes, okay. So now we have a little shoulder set up, putting that at the joint. Actually, let's put it up here. And then, so we can have a little shoulder roll if we want to do that later, create a little bone to the shoulder, bone to the forearm, 
bone to the hand bit. Let's kind of rearrange them in 3D space a little bit so that they kind of follow this. Move this out. Oh boy. So let's have a hand bone and then fingos going out. So I'm going from the root of this bone over here out. And let's pull this out for the thumb. A joint, joint. Let's kind of drag these out. So middle and so one, two, let's, we need to add another joint. So kind of put this here, kind of put this here. So this is going to be the world's quickest and crappiest rigging if you guys are up for that. And let's see. So we can also turn on x-ray so we can see what's going on here. That's in uh, the object properties of the armature. Uh, so one, two. Uh, this is a very cartoony kind of grippy hand. Let's, um, I kind of want to split these up so we can subdivide them. And, yeah, we can fix that a bit later. Okay, so let's go down to the bottom part and let's create hips. So shift E, pull these out, pull down to the knees, pull down to the kind of top ankle area. Ankles are weird. Okay, so we'll, we'll put them around here. That's the rotation there. Let's bend the knee out front a little bit. So x-axis mirror will allow us to uh, edit all of that stuff at once. Uh, and let us pull down a little ankle thing and a toe thing out here and a heel thing. I just really like setting up my foot kind of like this. Heel thing going back. Footy thing. And let's do some quick bone setup for our neck and head. Pull this up, holding down control to snap all the way merrily. And let's kind of add in a, just kind of scale that back. Pull this up. Um, I'm not going to worry about animating the face or anything like that right now. We're just worried about creating a just generic pose for our render. So this will have to do. And okay. So before we go into our next step, actually no. Let's uh let's wait to go into our next step. So in our next lesson, we are going to go and check out attaching the rig to the mesh. Well actually vice versa, attaching the mesh to the rig. And then seeing about our weight painting and how crazy and insane it will be. Let's do that right now. And to do that, let's select our object instead of selecting other things. And we need to move very specific pieces out. So I'm going to select verts. I'm going to select this one. Control L. P to separate by selection. Boop. I'm going to right click on this. Control L to separate by selection uh, this one control L P to separate by selection so I'm, I'm separating the pieces that are going to be moving individually with these bones around them and I'm going to have larger pieces like this uh, move with this chunk like that so I'm going to select this and separate this piece out and all of these pieces and I gotta like select the little brass connector pieces that is the technical term for them all right doot 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 i'm gonna hit control l i'm gonna hit p and we're gonna do by selection boom okay so those are all together so we need to separate the helmet and we got the visor got this part uh let's see what we get when we control l all right that's looking pretty good Let's uh, hit Z for a second. Okay, so our character is going to be wobbling with the rest of the object and hit Control P. No, 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 not Control P. P, 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 P. Uh, selection. Okay, so now we should have the helmet, little arm bits all free, and now I'm going to select our fancy little man, and I'm going to select our bones, and I'm going to hit Control P, and I'm going to parent with automatic weights. And 
Mm. Hopefully, this will have worked out correctly. So, we're going to do a quick little test. So, control tab. Let's just rotate things around. And that's looking pretty good. Nothing is going crazy or exploding or stretching. It's They're affecting the bones and the verts nearby, which is good. Let's, uh, let's rotate this whole thing. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. So we're, we're doing pretty good on this. Let's see. Let's just keep testing out little bits and pieces. That's okay. I'm not particularly worried about this. I'm just going to use it as to uh, shift position. And let's see if we can rotate. That's fine. Okay. Move this. That's good. Let's move this around. We're just like testing. Testing the rig. See if it's working out. Okay. Oh, it looks like the eyeballs aren't attached. Great. But uh, I'm going to attach them to the same bone there so that if we actually rotate the head around, they'll kind of stick to it. Okay. So let's work on attaching these floaty bits to our rig. So what we can do is right-click on the floaty bit, shift-click on the bone, and now we can hit Control-P and just select bone. So now what's going to happen when we rotate this is it going to rotate both, which is pretty sweet. So it's kind of rigged to it without having to actually do too much rigging. Okay, so we're going to select this, shift, and control P. Bone, we're going to do the same thing for the thighs. So, uh, so what's interesting is that uh, I switched to pose mode. So you can get to pose mode by two ways, by clicking here and then also, control tab to switch to pose mode. I may have done that earlier without telling you, and I'm very sorry, but that is how you do it. So, select our little floaty bit, select this, control P, bone, select this little bit, shift, right click, control P, bone. Okay, so our little setup right here, which bone do you, ah, this bone, shift, right click, control P, Bone. Okay. And our little head bit is going to be controlled by this one. Just that one. Actually, can I only select one? I want to select one. Okay, good. So now with that selected and that selected, can I hit Control-P and then bone? Yeah. And now we can move all our little pieces parts around. Except for our eyeballs, which are now elsewhere. And yeah, this is working out great. Okay, so we need our eyeballs to stick with the rest of our body. And with this, this is a different problem entirely because they are still part of that other mesh that we've been working with. Uh, and unfortunately, it's a little bit hard to see. So I'm going to show you a sweet trick that I always use. Right click on this thing, hit Control L, and now we're going to hit H for hide. All right, and that, <laughs> wait, that doesn't work because it's not connected anymore. So Alt-H to return it, and then I'm just going to move this to the layer below. So put this here, boop, and now we're going to go here and edit this. Okay, so we're going to, we're going to go ahead and edit some weights. So we're going to right-click on this bone. We're going to see what bone it is by clicking up here. This is bone 006. So normally, thousands of years ago, uh, back when we were creating this rig, um, what we would normally do is label all these bones and such because it would have made our lives significantly easier and we didn't because of lack of time and we just want to pose our model. We're not going to do any spectacular rigging. Uh, okay, and let's grab our eyes. Control L. Let's grab this part. Control L. Control L. Control L. And so this stuff is going to be now weighted to bone six. Bone six, where are you? So we're, we're scrolling through our list of vertex groups. Where are you, bone six? Bone six, bone six, bone six, bone six, bone six, bone six. There you go. Okay. So because we have these, uh, these verts selected, what we can do is we can now click assign, just like we would assign a material. So now... If we select this, we should be able to bobble our head back and forth. Yeah! All right. So, 
with that, we have a kind of completed rig, sort of. All right, I just oh, we didn't check the fingers, so let's see how this is working. Yeah, that's surprisingly good for using basically no effort. All right. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to do one thing here, which is a super awesome trick. Um, I'm going to hit A twice to select all the bones. I'm going to hit Alt-R to reset rotation. I'm going to hit Alt-G to reset transformation. And Alt-S to reset scale. And now, in our next lesson, we're going to pose this guy. It's going to be awesome. Two scoops. Our little render th Eh, we don't even have to worry about Ah, uh, yeah, we should worry about it. So let's hit insert to get to our camera view. And it, we can move our camera. Okay. So what matters is the lighting. So let's go over here and let's go and make sure that our lights and camera are up. And let's go and turn on our render. Let's see what we get. Okay. So we haven't broken anything significant between the last two, <laughs> the last few videos in regards to our material. This is good. Um, okay, so let's set this uh, set this guy up. And again, favorite things about cycles is that we can kind of just do things in relatively real time, and it's just awesome. Okay, so we're gonna give him a kind of relaxed pose. And to do that, actually, these arms need to stick out a little bit more because those are definitely deforming way too much. So the secret is, if things are broken in your rig, don't don't mess with it too much. And let's kind of swing the arm. Let's actually switch. See what our uh, how our bone is rotated, which is kind of okay. Let's. Bring this out because the shoulder is kind of like a uh, nice socket. Let's kind of put things over there. Pull this out a little bit. And let's raise the shoulder. Kind of give him a hand on his hip. Okay. So, IK makes this way easier, but we don't have IK right now. It's the Wild West. Okay. So, we also... Actually, what we should have been doing is working from the bottom up, because we don't have IK, so this is all going to be FK. FK means forward kinematics, and that is the way things are sometimes. So we're going to have a little relaxed pose, and that, where's my root? Oh boy, okay. So I don't have a root, root joint, which is a big no-no. I'm going to kind of set it up so that he's leaning on one of his legs. And you can see that is apparent. And you got to kind of bend the knees a little bit. Kind of do that to make it so that. You can see what this character is doing properly. And just going to kind of do this stuff. Pull this out. No, keep it out like this. And yeah, that's good for now. And actually rotate this a little bit forward okay his his hands are really huge so it's kind of just put them over near the belt area pull this out actually let's not have him touching his belt let's just kind of have his arm out a little bit uh, let's reset the rotation Bring it down. Kind of bring this down a little bit. 
as well. Okay, and work on the hand. Let's create a little quick pose. And of course we have to bend the fingos a little bit. Get them out of their like weird rigid fit. Okay. Uh, yes. So X-ray makes this completely... Makes it actually able to do this kind of thing. Let's rotate all these at once. Rotate all of these at once. Oh man, I'm selecting everything. So shift right click is select. Gonna kinda curl the fingers a little bit. And what are we gonna do with the other arm? Actually, we gotta rotate our torso a little bit. So he's kinda bent and we can have actually rotate the head so he's facing the camera. Okay. Actually, where's the camera? Yeah, we gotta we gotta rotate it a little bit more. Okay, that's about right. And let's uh, let's kind of rotate this leg a little bit. Oh boy, not too much. Bring this arm down as well. Kind of pull it back. Bend this forward. And, uh, yeah. Keep tweaking these fingers. So it's not like this huge grippy thing. Now let's, uh, pull it back down here. Put these in. I wish I could... Actually, yes, I can do this. So, control Z, doot. So if I can have them rotate around their individual origins, I can just have a curl go right there. Yeah! So we balled up his second hand really easily. And... Yeah, I want him to uh to have a little bit more weight in his step. Or not his step, but like his pose. Let's uh kind of wiggle him back a little bit more. So, a little bit back like this. Kind of pull him forward a little bit. So there's a, a little bit of a curve to his spine. And let's see about this. Okay. Let's uh, rotate his head again towards the camera. Oh, that's cool. We can rotate the whole uh, head thing, but we don't want that. We just want to rotate his fleshy alien head. Make sure it stays inside of the helmet. And uh, actually... Don't need that. Let's turn this back on. Okay. So, we've got our pose. And, actually, that's, that's kind of like, yeah, that's fine. Okay. So, next step is we should actually set up the render settings. So, he looks pretty cool when we render him. Also, we should probably set it, give him a little, like, room or something to stand on. Or the surface of the moon. Yes, we're going to put them on the moon. Okay, that's our next step. Ha <laughs> ha! In our next lesson, we're going to put them on the moon. All right. Uh, see you next time. Um, so, we also could have ended it and just set up render settings for this. But, let's go, uh, let's, let's, let's kick it up to 11. All right. So, uh, this wouldn't be one of my tutorials without a 
small sculpting demo. Okay. So <laughs> let us go to another channel and or like another layer, and then we're gonna mesh plane and let's just make it incredibly huge. And let's collect let's turn off cycles. Get get out of here, cycles. I don't want you here. You're taking up all my CPU cycles, actually GPU cycles. But it's okay. It's okay. We'll see you again soon. Okay. Uh, let's embiggen this. Let us look at it from this perspective. Let's make it huge. Uh, let's rotate it so that the corner is adjacent to the trapezoid of the camera. There's a there's an actual better word for that, but I can't remember what it is. Um, okay. So let's see where our alien is in 3D space. And he is piercing through the floor. So let's move this down. And why do I have... I'm going to set it up there. Move this down. Let's go look at his footies. Okay, so one small footy for mankind. One small footy for aliens across the universe. Okay. So we've got our little edge. We're going to actually pull this out. Oop. Pull this out, and we're only going to sculpt what we need, which is going to be this area. So we can actually kind of pull this back away from us towards that area. And, okay, so let's start our sculpting. So first we got to do is some settings. If you haven't done them before, if you haven't done sculpting in Blender or used these fancy settings to make it so that you can sculpt without everything going crazy, uh, let me show you them. So go to user preferences. Okay, not like that. So go back to go back to uh, go back to info, and we got to go to file and then user preferences. Not switching it over to user preferences there. Uh, every everything in Blender is a panel, including this one. This one's just not docked. Um, okay, so let us go to system and make sure that VBOs is checked. Uh, that's pretty much it. That's basically it. Also, if your uh, cycles doesn't show up with a CUDA device, make sure to click CUDA and then look for your uh, NVIDIA card. Alright, so after you hit VBOs and CUDA, save user settings. I've already done that. We're cool. Now I'm going to start sculpting. So, let's go to sculpt mode. And because Blender is a wonderful, happy, friendly program, instead of an angry, terrifying one, what we're going to do is we're going to go over here, open up this panel, go to Tools, and we're going to go down to Dyne Topo. So I have lauded the uh, abilities of Dyne Topo in the past, and I'm going to continue to say Dyne Topo is amazing. Enable Dyne Topo. So detail is... Okay, so to explain all of these... Is detail is based on screen space uh, pixels, so it will create a tessellation every 12 pixels. So for our case, because we're using 720 by uh, <clears throat> 1280 by 720, we should be able to create larger spaces here. Also, I don't want mirror on. Let's go fix that. Uh, symmetry lock. Turn off symmetry. So this is going to be the rough and woolly surface of the moon. We're going to make some broad strokes. I'm going to hit F to increase my brush size. I'm just going to kind of create little hills and valleys. Actually, hills. Just going to kind of kind of just draw stuff. Okay, he's going to be in a crater. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. There we go. Let's put that there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now, to increase the resolution that we're working at, we can do one of two things. We can zoom in, and we can start doing that, and it's going to tessellate automatically for us in screen space with our detail level. Okay, but we are going to zoom back out, and we're going to increase our detail level to... And to increase it, you actually lower it. So we're going to lower it to, let's say, 6. Um, we're just going to paint a little bit more on, and only certain tools up here will actually work with it. That's fine. And I'm going to hit shift to actually kind of smooth out these pieces parts. And we're having issues over there. So I'm going to stop 
poking that as much. And I just kind of go over here. And, uh, okay, let's look over here. How's his foot doing? Let's actually embed his foot a little bit into the surface by just kind of pulling it out. Cool. And let's uh, cut in a little bit over here just because. Um, and let us even go so far as to add in some more detail. So let's lower our detail a little bit more. Do, 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 do. And let's kind of smooth these areas out. And yeah. So cut in by holding down control. So I create this little cut over here. And we're just going to create a, a kind of interesting looking terrain. And okay. So I also want to shrink it down cut in here. I just want to create little pock marks. So little little hits all over the surface because the surface is most likely completely irregular because um, it's the moon and it's been hit by asteroids or well, yeah, asteroids a uh, many, many times. So I'm just tapping my little Wacom pressure tablet down on our surface and smoothing it out a little bit. So there are multiple uh, detail refine modes. So subdivide collapse will both subdivide and collapse edges. Subdivide edges will only add edges and collapse edges will lower resolution when you do this. So let's uh, scroll down a little bit more to detail levels and kind of just draw in and increase the tessellations. Smooth this out. And we're getting to a place where I'm almost happy with this. And we're going to make up for anything by just using a material to add a little bit. And uh, quickly, while I still have you here, I'm going to create a texture. New. We're going to select a... We're actually going to go over here. And we're going to create a new texture which is going to be a uh, noise a yeah let's do a yeah just a noise and we're gonna kind of use that to paint in little pockmarks so I'm gonna hold down control and create these little pockmarks I'm gonna actually increase the size and just kind of go all over the surface of the moon of our little moon it's kind of going at random doesn't really matter where you paint or how much detail you put in. You can kind of put in little pockmarks as well. And I'm just going to hold down. I'm going to switch from subdivide collapse to only subdivide. Uh, only subdivide because it's causing little problems here. I'm going to smooth it out a little bit. I'll smooth it out a little bit over here. A little bit over here. Okay. So I'm happy with the surface of our moon right now. Uh, in our next lesson, we are going to materialize it and add in a little star in the background. So there's a little bit of, I guess it'll act as rim light and it'll add to the flavor of being in space. Okay. Render. Okay. So I'm going to hit Shift S. No. What am I doing? Okay. I'm going to get out of sculpt mode and then I'm going to hit Shift S. Here's her to center. And now I'm going to hit Mesh. Let's do a UV sphere. Let us make sure that it is smooth. Let us bring it all the way back over here. Back over here. Uh, yeah. yeah, let's put it over here. Actually, let's, uh, yeah. And then we're going to add our emitter material to it. And we're going to see how crazy this gets. Where are you, emitter? Light. Okay. So, let's put these back on. Let's move this back a little bit. Let's now check out what we are seeing now. Oop. Oh boy. Okay. So this has obviously got to change a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to split these and we're going to hit T, hit T, split this up a little bit more. 
And we're going to switch this back to UV image editor so we're not really having too many details perturbed. And let's kind of pull these up and away a little bit so that they're not blasting the surface of the moon too much. And pull this back. Oh, no. Pulled it back way too far. Okay, and let's pull this away a little bit. And so the surface of our moon is actually quite dark. And let's create a new material. Let's call it moon. This actually looks kind of like uh, kind of like clay, which is pretty sweet. So we could totally make a fake claymation uh, color. Drop this down. Boop, boop, boop. So our moon's very kind of dark on the whole albedo scale and you know what yeah no okay so let's scale that down and yeah let's uh let's let's make it easier for us to create a field of stars in the background and let us do that by uh, actually creating a mesh a plane a mesh, a plane, and let's actually go over to it, boink, and let's rotate it 90 degrees, let's match it up with the background, make it parallel to that, scale it up, scale it up, scale it up, scale it up, and let's turn off cycles for a second, because we don't need it for this aspect of positioning a bunch of dots. And let's create a new particle system. Let us call this particle system STARS. And let's use it to... Let's actually grab our little sphere here. And let's label this sphere. What are we labeling it? We're labeling it STAR. STAR. Okay. Selecting our giant scary plane. And we're going to... Let's see... Um, Okay, so we're going to change our lifetime to, like, let's say 500. Let's have start and end at 1, start and end at 1. So it's going to live in one frame. And then they're going to move. I don't want them to move ever. So we're going to go and go to field weights, turn gravity off. Actually, we can, I believe, turn physics off. So turn physics off. That's cool. And so our stars will live one one night. Uh, we will turn our emitter off. We will select object, and we are going to select our star as our dupli object. So now it's going to have millions of little stars out there. We just got to kind of show it. And the scale right now is super tiny. So now we're at one, and let's actually random size it a bit. So we have different size stars, and let's see what it looks like rendered. Yeah, cycles, we got this. Okay, that's pretty cool. So let's actually dump down the size a little bit. So 0.5, see what that looks like. That's still very bright, 0.2. Yeah, it's starting to look pretty cool. And let's actually differentiate these uh, these textures. So let's grab our star and let's actually call this, let's create a new texture, call it Starlight. And let's change the color a little bit to like a yellow or reddish. And that'll give us a little bit of differentiation. Um, Let's go back to our particles and lower the size 0 0.02. Let's see how low we can go without it getting all ridiculous. Let's point zero five. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. And we still have our uh, our star here. And depending on how many stars we want, let's uh, keep it like that. Okay. Let us put Heel's helmet back on. See what that looks like. Boop. All right. 
and uh, we're starting to get a pretty cool image and let's make sure that this is smooth okay so in our next lesson we are going to actually render this thing all right see you next time all right so right now what i can see as issues i actually did a little quick render this is at 50 percent of uh default and i notice right here that we're getting a little bit noisy so to fix that what we need to do is up our render samples and possibly increase our clamp uh, right now i've got samples at 500 and that's legit um so i could pump it up to like a thousand and it'll most likely fix it uh this didn't take long to render at all it took like maybe two minutes um also something very important to keep in mind when using something like a single c uh, a single gpu processor is uh the tile size so it only does one tile at a time because it's it's effectively a single thread unless you have multiple in a in a uh, array um so I just bumped up my tile size to 256 by 256, and it renders faster than it would normally, so it doesn't have to keep picking up little buckets. Um, so we're going to do a little bit of a pose change. Uh, I'm going to twist them a little bit towards the camera, and that's going to be fine. That's going to be perfect. So let's click on our armature. I'm going to hit Z, and all we have to do to change this is rotate this a little bit, Let's go see what it looks like at our camera view. Let's rotate it just slightly so we can see what's going on here. Turn on rendered. And I'm actually going to lower my preview down to 10. And let's rotate it back a little bit. Yeah, I like how the uh, helmet's occluding a little bit of this. And he's slightly turned towards us. That's good. Um, okay, so, oh, also these little light specs, what's causing that is that it's, uh, we need to set up the clamp a little bit to deal with that or increase our sample size. Okay, or in increase our, our number of samples. So, uh, what I've done is I've switched my render to 500. I'm going to actually pump it up to, let's say, uh, 1,000, actually 1,200. Let's do that. Go big or go home. Okay, uh, so we're doing that. And there's actually a bunch of different settings that we can do straight up for cycles. I believe if we go to the camera settings, we could set up defocus really easily. Uh, let's go to the camera. And let's actually look at this. Depth of field, focus. Uh, let's uh, change our distance. And we can actually change the size of the aperture. So everything blurs out immediately, which is pretty cool. And uh, actually, yeah, let's uh, let's create a, a little empty to drive our focal length if we don't crash. All right, yeah. We're going to do plain axes. And we're going to put it right. Yeah, that's, that's a perfect spot for it. So let's go back to our camera. Beep, beep. Let's actually select our camera here in the little hierarchy view. And let us select our, where are you, empty. So we're going to select our empty, and now our defocus is going to be focused in on this spot, and we can increase or lower it by changing this around. And so zero is infinite. Uh, the higher we go, the worse our vision gets. <laughs> the, the more... Uh, more blender needs glasses. Uh, so at one, it's kind of huge. So let's go down to like 0 0.05 or something more reasonable, 0.5. Way too fuzzy right there. Uh, yeah, 0 0.08 maybe, 0 0.1. Okay, so we're, we're going to get a little bit of a def defocus effect, but... We don't want it that high, so point, point zero five. Okay, um, that's pretty cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire off a render, and we're going to come back and see what these settings look like. I'm going to actually make sure that we are in specifically 
I'm going to tell you exactly what my settings are. So here we go. So device GPU compute uh, features that supported. So we can actually do experimental and that uh, th there be dragons. Uh, so resolution 1920 by 1080. I'm going to pump that up to 100%. I'm going to go down to our samples and render, and uh, we can choose other settings, but I am okay with where we are right now. Uh, we can also choose sampling presets, so final or preview, and it doesn't really matter. I'm going to just go to preview and then up my samples to 1200. And, yeah, that's that's where we're going to go. I'll see you in a couple minutes. All right, be right back. Oh, uh, one quick thing before I rendered. Uh, I just wanted to let you know, down here, the tile size, very important. So this, like I said before, affects how uh, it actually renders, like in, like how, how many chunks it does. So I'm going to put this up here. I'm going to pause it. 